Welcome back to uh, all our online and pres uh, physically present listeners and colleagues. Um, uh, so now we're having the first of three panels today. Uh, and in this panel, we're going to discuss uh, strategies for liberating curatorial processes from various current power structures. We're not going to be going into those power structures right now so very much um, in this panel. The strategies include participatory and dialogical and process-oriented approaches, as well as collective and self-organized, and perhaps automatic or even indeterminate and random forms of program development. Uh, when we remember, for example, ancient practices of governance, we realize that choosing participants in governance by lottery could also be an effective tool for democracy. Uh, Lisa Lim has also uh, just pointed out in Du Yum's uh, keynote uh, that there, there's also uh, the need for leadership from within each community, from within many different communities. So curating doesn't have to be done by one curator. Uh, its relevance and coherence doesn't have to be assumed to issue from one vision emanating from one point of view. The obvious limits for what can be curated by a curator working top-down are considerable and are unlikely to truly honour demands of diversity and greater access in the arts and in music and sound art. So our focus for this uh, hour and a bit is on the role of curators and curating today in fostering diversity and provoking change by negotiating topics that are relevant for a hopefully pluralistic society. Also, we'll discuss how regional contracts, uh, contexts influence perspectives on curating and cu create completely new approaches and musical emphases that shift our understanding of what is contemporary in music and in life. Our regional context now is, of course, that this symposium is organized and hosted in Berlin with the dominance of European participants and Europe-centered perspectives. European curators are typically occupied with questions of how to expand programs, how to embrace and include more and more non-European perspectives or even inner European perspectives, uh, such as gender and so on a concern which is in itself a form of friendly colonialism and which takes place on a terrain full of pitfalls such as tokenism, exoticism and appropriation. On this panel we want to go first of all straight to issues and strategies of curating in several particular and contrasting regional contexts and secondly we will deal with the interconnection of regional contexts through transfer of artworks and productions between one context and another. Not forgetting, of course, the trans-regional nature of more and more artists and curators' own lives and bi biographies, as we've all already been reminded this morning. There is a difference between regarding internationalism in the arts as a form of government-supported cultural tourism, an exchange between national cultural ministries, etc., and asking how the arts are affected by and involved in migration and migration's complex chains of causality and effect. True that at the time we're living in, uh, where this is a hybrid panel, we have one member in Berlin, Stephanie Karp, others in Be Beirut, Moscow, and New York. Please correct me, uh, panel members, if you have moved <laughs> uh, since uh, since we planned this. You you are joined again by uh, Du Yun um, uh, and also by Sharif Senawi uh, in Beirut, by Art Yom Kim in uh, in Moscow, um, speaking of his experiences from Tashkent, amongst other places. Um, uh, yes, and, and Stephanie Karp here, uh, here in Berlin. During the course of this panel, uh, Sharif and Arjom and Stephanie will each give a medium short statement uh, on the issues that are at the front of their minds within curating right now and on strategies and methods that they adopt or invent within curatorial frameworks. And in between these individual statements, there will be some discussion between the panel members in response to one another's works and methods. And finally, at the end, there will be a more general discussion uh, with questions and answers involving uh, all of you. I would like us to remember that in this zone of dynamic curating, many methods and strategies arise ad hoc in response to particular situations and only reveal themselves as such and as best practice cases or working models when we sit here, like today, and talk about them. 
So I think it's our job today to, to, to table as many as possible of these cases, solutions and ways of thinking from which we can then extract models and strategies when we get home. Uh, so first of all, I would like to uh, yeah, call on Sharif uh, Senoi, uh, uh, who um, is uh, uh, in Beirut, joining us from Beirut. Hello. Uh, and uh, Sh Sharif uh, uh, is working at the uh, Irtijal uh, Festival, which he co-founded and has uh, curated uh, ever since its beginning. Um, he works uh, as a musician, guitarist, uh, within experimental and improvisational practices. Uh, and these improvisational practices reach out to many places, including the Echt Musik, uh, Echtzeit Musik uh, scene in, here in Berlin, but also go deep into uh, local and regional practices uh, in, in the Arabic and Middle Eastern um, region. Uh, yeah, uh, Sharif, would you like to uh, take, it, take it from the top with what's, in, what's on your plate right now? <laughs> um, do you hear me? Do you we hear do. me well? We yes. hear you well. Uh, what's on my plate uh, right now is maybe very disconnected from the topic of uh, this, uh, this uh, webinar, this seminar. So... Uh, I was more like thinking to, to give the general uh, context of curating in, uh, in Lebanon. Uh, at the moment, it's mostly uh, survival strategies because of the situation in the country. And uh, we, are, we don't really have the luxury uh, to curate anything. We're trying to save the scene. And uh, um, uh, most musicians are actually leaving for better, uh, to live in better places. So it's... Uh, more of a dramatic situation um, act, uh, at the moment, but uh, yeah, to stay in the topic of the of the the, the seminar, um, uh, I thought just to explain how, um, in a way, uh, being a, a, a pretty much an active musician uh, internationally, but mostly as a curator, mostly active uh, in Lebanon and in other places in the Arab world, how this uh, diversity issue is very different than the, what we have in Europe uh, and was actually imposed on us. So initially, when we started uh, our festival, our programming, our workshops about uh, 20 years ago, a bit uh, more than that, uh, we didn't want to be diverse, which is uh, ironical. We actually uh, wanted to uh, promote uh, um, improvisation, contemporary music, uh, and all these practices in uh, our area of the world. Uh, we wanted to promote them as aggressively as possible and basically uh, impose this uh, very alien um, uh, Are you hearing me well? Because I'm hearing some weird noises as I'm speaking. Uh, for us, it's working great. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> I'm weir uh, hearing as if like uh, some ghosts were passing by <laughs> and whales and things like this. It's not uh, us. <laughs> okay, great. So, uh, so, so basically, yeah, initially we wanted to be, uh, like 20 years ago, we wanted to be a, a radical, uh, new and improvised music uh, militants and uh, br basically bring them to our area of the world, which, uh, where they didn't exist uh, or, or very, 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 uh, in very rare instances before uh, we arrived. Uh, but then, but then we we noticed, uh, in a way, how alien and uh, removed we were from uh, uh, the the context, the specific context of the country, and uh, very very early on, like really in the first and second edition, uh, we decided, okay, we're we're promoting a kind of music which people have no uh, reference to, they have nothing to relate it to, it's just coming as, uh, as if it's emerging out of the blue, without background, without a specific history, without even a need uh, by the local scene to have uh, this kind of music, at least in the beginning. 
and uh, we had to start imagining ways to bring people to it. Uh, not only audience, but also musicians to uh, make them understand what it is about, how it evolved. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, without, without having people feeling that it's... Uh, in a way, we were in the, in the colonial... We, we, although locals, we were in the colonial position, like we're bringing something completely from abroad, which is disconnected from the the surrounding and trying to impose it uh, almost like a, a colonial entity. Uh, what are the, the solutions we found? Uh, basically, they're, they're pretty much in... Um, in the, in the co cooperation uh, idea that, that I saw mentioned at many points during um, uh, the, the, the earlier sessions. Um, so, okay, I'm, let's say I'm a, I'm a radical uh, free improviser and uh, I'm meeting uh, a guy who plays traditional music. Uh, how, how can I communicate with him? How can I uh, let him know, uh, understand what I'm doing? What's the link between uh, what he is doing? What is a link possible? And uh, it took many failures and misunderstandings and, uh, and uh, also disastrous uh, experiments to, to reach a point 20 years later where uh, the various scenes in Lebanon are almost emerged. It's, it's, uh, it's beautiful in a way. And um, of course, we didn't expect this in the beginning. Uh, but uh, we really came before the, the multiple crisis that uh, uh, hit us recently and is almost erasing uh, the Lebanese musical scene as we speak. So before this crisis, we came to a point where it was extremely possible to build uh, uh, an orchestra where you would have musicians coming from very different fields of music, uh, uh, traditional, the various currents of traditional, not, not just, it's not just one traditional music, you have many different characters who have many different uh, outlook on traditional music itself to mix them with people coming from a more uh, uh, classical training to people coming from experimental, from electronics. And you could imagine having all these people working together without sounding like uh, fusion music, like piling up different styles. But actually, these people had worked together so much on various different projects that new languages uh, were emerging at the time. And so once you have these new languages, you can build upon them, capitalize upon them, and uh, have uh, a genuine collaborative work, which instead of just making one plus one equals two, uh, give you a one plus one equals one, like a completely new one uh, in a way. Uh, so, so, so yeah, th this was never a strategy in itself, although now I feel that this is becoming, uh, at least in Europe, in contemporary music, uh, the, 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 the purpose of a strategy, uh, whereas in our, our uh, case, it came by default almost like a, a fix to a problem, like a fix to something we, we weren't able to get across. So to, in order to fix it, uh, we did it. I don't know if I still have time. But basically, just to to yeah to to explain, for example, how uh, Irtijal festival works. So, because we couldn't curate like a full festival of improvised and contemporary music, we started including uh, um, all types of creative and innovative forms of music in it very early on, whatever we could find. Uh, even uh, an instrumental rock band, which had uh, um, a minimal experimental component, v very small. So we felt compelled that we have to include it in order to encompass the entire local music scene, which was um, a, 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 um, a, a tiny scene, like very few players at the time, 20 years ago. So 
we'd include them. We, we'd basically include anybody who was uh, uh, involved in any type of innovation. Later on, as the scene uh, developed and there were many more projects and also we were able to create uh, uh, more diversity from abroad, the festival itself, Irtijal, which uh, became um, um, basically a, an old, well-established uh, festival, uh, the, the curatorial line was it has to be uh, um, a trip for the audience uh, into the 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 the, uh, the realm of new and innovative music, and we called it an experimental music festival. Although, as you know, experimental music doesn't exist, so it was just a word to encompass the possibility to have uh, uh, experiments in all styles of music. And the more diverse the festival is, the more uh, 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 styles are present, the more collaborations you have, uh, the more we felt the audience was uh, uh, compelled, the atmosphere was uh, positive, and it slowly became the identity of the festival. This is like uh, started in 2008. So like this is about clearly, it became clear uh, about 12 years ago. Uh, um, and today I feel many festivals in Europe are, are, are looking for this, especially contemporary music festival, which I, I feel is a, is a positive uh, development, uh, uh, of course. Uh, and so uh, in a way, uh, from a completely different uh, perspective, uh, um, the, the debate came to be how do we diversify our uh, programs, how do we uh, um, yeah, basically uh, uh, break with our uh, very uh, radical past, which was uh, justified at the time, but maybe uh, no longer today. Thank you so much. One word, um, just in case uh, we still have the persistent uh, uh, noise problem. Check that every, every, all the microphones in the, here are turned off, please, um, if anyone's got anything on. Um, uh, thank you so much for that. So uh, you can't curate at the moment, you, you, you have said, and you didn't want to be diverse. And this is so we already have the wrong title for today for your situation. Um, and, uh, that and was a long time ago. <laughs> And um, and I want, of course, uh, I wanted to ask you with this, uh, uh, what you've described of uh, uh, sort of bringing together uh, what is traditional with uh, a kind of radical militant uh, improvisation uh, practice with all that drive. Um, how how uh, how do you feel about the relevance of? Uh, I mean, you have this unfortunate expertise of uh, curating in a crisis, which is e which it is easy for Europeans to romanticize about that 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 is wonderfully dynamic and so on. But uh, how do you feel uh, with all the experience that you've just uh, described for us? Uh, uh, your possibilities for uh, continuing uh, with the festival? What new directions are possible at all? Um, yeah. Well, uh, uh, I, I was uh, pretty happy with the situation before. I'd like to, to first go back <laughs> to, to, to how things were a few years ago and then uh, move forward again, because now we're basically uh, only moving backwards. Uh, but yeah, this is due to the context in Lebanon. Uh, probably many of you don't know what the situation is. I mean, probably you all know uh, we had some dramatic events. But the, the crisis is much uh, deeper. Uh, so uh, now what I'm doing now, I'm just uh, basically uh, trying to find out uh, which, who, who's, who's not leaving the country because everybody's leaving, all the musicians are leaving, uh, uh, understandably. And uh, how to uh, basically keep uh, these musicians uh, to, 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 to keep them believing that they are musicians, to, to, to keep their creative process going, uh, not to uh, succumb, like to give up, 
basically, especially uh, the younger generation, especially people who are just starting to 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 um, yeah imagine that they could be musicians to try to start to have a musical career. Uh, basically to try to tell them uh, don't give up you can still have a musical career uh, please come let's do this project uh, let me commission this work i mean as ertijal let us uh, yeah let us pay you to do this you know let us uh, still make you feel that you are a professional musician and that, that you can uh, uh, earn money from from it so so it's uh, it's now micro strategies really uh, uh we are now very far away from what i was um, talking about before uh, sadly sadly but uh, i'm not sure this is the topic of of this uh, seminar to be honest it's your situation and it's a situation that we're interested to hear about um before i open uh, just to the rest of the panel for the moment just if uh, um uh, yeah, before, before, sorry, before we go on to uh, um, uh, Archeom Kim, I just wanted to ask if anyone in the panel wanted to already give some feedback on this, um, uh, so either either the um, uh, the kind of um, the work that you have done up to now or the situation that you're in now with feeding local processes as a matter of musical existence. Okay, well then we'll leave uh, uh, all of this hanging in the air and uh, uh, thank you so, so much, uh, Sharif, and we will uh, introduce now uh, Arshom Kim um, from uh, presently in Moscow, uh, otherwise uh, from uh, Tashkent. Uh, Arshom Kim is uh, uh, running the Omnibus Ensemble uh, in Uzbekistan. Uh, and has uh, 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 um, also uh, founded that, co-founded it, and uh, cultivated it as a place for collective composition and music making, uh, which has a spiritual dimension, which has also roots in um, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, uh, Uzbeki uh, cultural practices, uh, and uh, which um, is uh, deeply committed to turning around uh, the idea that uh, music reflects on uh, crisis and burning issues uh, of our time, that, but could actually be a tool for, uh, for change or for activation uh, within the issues of our time. Uh, Archiom, thank you for joining us. Hello. Can you hear me? Is it okay? Good. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for inviting and uh, everything what uh, Sharif told about his situation with his ensemble and uh, the musical scene uh, in his place is very much relevant and very much uh, the same in our country. So I have not, I, I don't know why to repeat it. I just maybe uh can share with you some practical uh, strategies some pra practical tools which we were using uh to solve absolutely the same kind of uh questions the same kind of uh problems uh which were appearing during our rehearsing uh, per uh during our rehearsals and during uh, the realizations of our uh projects and uh, I think it is very much connected to the process of curating and to the theme of our symposium because uh, in, in the very simple but very basic uh, sense, the process of curating is uh, the process of talking with uh, different people, with artists, with uh, managers, with sponsors. And it is very much about collecting the information and then the following analysis and then the making decision. And here I would like to say, I would like to mention that this process should not be limited by simple collecting the ideas on the informational level. It should be accompanied by certain exchange on emotional and spiritual level. Actually, in the first place, uh, the talk with artists in between artists should be an exchange of uh, on emotional and spiritual levels 
and it is it is necessary to observe this process in this way because only in this case it, i think it is possible to generate principally new ideas so if to put it in very practical and uh, simple form if i'm a curator and if i'm a talk if i'm talking with an artist i would ask this artist not only to represent her and or his points uh, of, of artistic views but i would ask him or her to work together with me during our talk on generating completely principally new concepts new ideas which never existed before neither in my head or in the head of this artist and as it uh, has been mentioned in du Yun's video then some accident will happen some al al rulness is very much necessary as a as a condition for any kind of uh, talk with artists uh, in in our case during the talk of curator and artist in order to generate a new concept for 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 uh, for a production for a project uh, it, and it is like i would ask this artist to co-create together with me an idea and to, it, it is something like if we, we would compose music together and um, to achieve this effect to achieve this result uh, we together with my team we for years of our work we discovered that certain physical uh, physical techniques physical uh, psychophysical techniques are necessary to be used and we developed our own uh, psychophysical technique, which is uh, called, which we called uh, the method uh, for collective resonance composing. And the basic principle of this method is to establish a certain resonance between the participants of the project, of, or of the process, of the creative process. Uh, not only intellectual resonance, but also physical resonance, mental resonance, emotional resonance, and spiritual resonance. And uh, two key principles here in, in this method uh, are, the first one is uh, provocative paradoxical questions. And the second uh, principle is um, the establishing of constant loop of retelling the answers, reinterpreting the answers on this provocative paradoxical question. So uh, my statement to be discussed with you uh, would be uh, to think about, uh, about a certain strategy while talking with people during the process of curating, while talking with our artists with artistic people and with people in general uh, instead of collecting individual points of view to generate new concepts principally new concepts collectively so i would say this is the the first statement which i propose uh, to you to be discussed and I would call this statement like a micro strategy, uh, the strategy for, for distance face to face. And the second statement I would call uh, the statement for uh, the, the strategy for distance from the bird eye panorama from, from very much above. And for this, I would uh, uh, propose you to think about fr from many aspects of uh, the curatorial process today, from many aspects, I would um, like to mark the aspect of uh, interdisciplinarity, because we see that uh, today the most important discoveries in science, the, the, the discoveries which open new horizons insights are happening in between disciplines in between neurobiology and physics 
in between history and mathematics. And I believe that in music, we have we, we simply have no choice. We have to be active participants of this project of this process. And uh, I would call this process of getting more and more interdisciplinary as a process of reconsidering what does it mean to be a composer today? What does it mean to be a performer today? And what does it mean to be a listener today? And again, if to put it into simple way, into simple words, if I would be a curator talking with uh, a composer, I would ask this composer to create together with me uh, during our talk, a, con a new, a principally new concept of a project when this composer is not only a composer, when he or she is a composer and a conductor and a stage director of the performance. Or if I would be a composer and uh, while uh, talking with a musician, with whom I work at the moment, uh, I would ask this musician to create a concept when this musician is not only the performer, when this musician is performer and composer, uh, when this musician performer and composer and listener. So uh, my second statement um, here, to which I would propose for you to discuss, is uh, the, the reconsidering um, the roles of composers, performers, and listeners today in, in, in music today, and to finding new formats of what is composer, what is music, and what is performer, and what is listener collectively. Thank you, that's, that's all what I propose you to think about. Thank you very much, Arjun, that's, uh, that's very clear. Um, and thank you for kind of uh, bringing out this idea also, not only that collectivity is about uh, uh, talk between people, but it's also that we ourselves are, uh, often have many roles uh, and that to acknowledge those different creative roles as going in and out of each other um uh, in yeah in in development um so now i think i'm going to um actually move straight on as uh, uh, as we want to have good uh, time for the discussion uh, with everyone at the end, I'm going to move straight on to um, to uh, welcome into the discussion uh, Stephanie Karp here in Berlin with me. Um, Stephanie Karp is the director of the Rotriennale and has been vocal uh, in uh, talking about the political aspects of curating. She has also had to talk about the political aspects um, due to uh, the politicization uh, of uh, w uh, works that she's presented and people that she's presented. Um, so, um, yeah, and we have invited her here today specifically as someone not coming from the musical field uh, because um, so many of these uh, issues or uh, discourses have all, all, always be, all, already been running ahead uh, in other disciplines and in theatre. Um, and uh, this is kind of particularly um, inspiring for us within music to be able to look at how you already have been working uh, with post-colonial and um, discussion. Yeah. Thank you for these beautiful statements. Um, curating in my field means different activities. It is uh, either might be creating a diverse ensemble in a theater house. It uh, may be the practice of making a program more deep, diverse. It uh, um, make maybe the practice of festival making, of international curating. That is what I have done in the last about 10 years. And there it is a big difference. I found out now uh, by the last three years when I worked uh, as an intendant for the Ruhr Triennale, um, whether you uh, curate an international and post-colonial program for a small international festival or production house like Hebel Theatre here in Berlin, then you are doing exactly what you are supposed to do, 
or whether you do the same work and try to make a um, try to open the post-colonial space in a big representative festival like Rotrenade, <clears throat> there this way of curating is immediately um, a political statement which is um, very critically regarded, like under a microscope. And also the fact, if you try to make really creations which are shifting, what I was always interested in, which are shifting between the genres, between the music and the language and the, um, and the performance. Um, I, want to po I want to point out, just listening to your statements, um, I want to point out two main differences between theatre and music, which are um, very obvious, but um, they have consequences. One main difference is that music has less nar narrative and is more abstract, while theatre has always a narrative, it always has a sort of an impact and is always bound to a language and mostly in our European culture to a national language and that is a problem. And that causes the question to me, is it a need, is it an obligation that the language of the dominant culture is the language on stage? Why is there only one language on stage? And how important is spoken language anyway? And how important is, and that is still an ongoing discussion, in, at least in German, and I guess also in French, and many European theater, um, is, um, is the art of speaking, the Sprechkunst, um, is that a criterion of, of quality? And I think all the criteria of quality are one of our obstacles in decolonizing our view on art anyway, in, and especially if we are curating in, you know, in the big re representative world. Another difference is that <clears throat> theatre is performed by actors or performers, and that raises the question like, questions like who is allowed to represent whom in which context. By the way, Germany was one of the last countries in the world in which blackfacing was a normal theatre practice. It's not that long ago that we still did that on our stages. And one strategy to get out of this dilemma of, of representation and representing um, by acting or performing is that everybody should represent everybody, independent from age, ethnicity and sex, and that there should not be the identity of one actor or actress with one character. So the who represents whom is all the time shifting and changing, so we avoid any attribution. An interest, interesting example in this field was um, uh, the Schwarz Kopie, that was a production by, made by the Münchner Kammerspiele and an artist called Anta Helena Recke. Um, and she copied a, a piece of another artist um, it was a very German material, and uh, she copied this um, performance minute by minute, but exchanged the cast from a white cast to a black cast. So she changed the perspective and sh changed the perception, and that was a really interesting um, yeah, conceptual activity, I think, or conceptual artwork, which was very much discussed in our um, theatre community. Um, because it opened up to many questions. So if you start to curate in the post-colonial space, you are political whether you want it or not. You are leaving the canon of the national representation. You are leaving the European canon. Uh, you present or produce new formats, you have to. Uh, hybrids, which do not fit in any category of genre and not fit always in the expectations of representation. So you have to be experimental and you have to be more reflected. And very important, you are confronted with all sorts of contradictions and uh, self-contradictions, which can be turned into something productive or into unproductive conflicts, which I had uh, suffered at the Ruhr Triennale here and there. Um, you and the audiences have to accept other narratives, also those which are disturbing, which are inconsistent with the mainstream and dominant culture's narratives. 
German perspectives and German taboos are not everybody else's perspectives and taboos. And that is something we have to accept. In my regard, it is important to create an open space, and I think it's even the heart of our, our work, to create an open space of different narratives, especially those which are disturbing, to make us aware of our own contradictions by realizing heterogeneous realities. Um, you have, if you are inviting and co-producing or commissioning um, work, you have always to question your own position. It is already a colonial attitude, attitude to collect performances from all over the world. Uh, judge them with your Western taste and pre just present them in a Western festival. And then you ask yourself, what are the criteria of your judgment? Um, if we question our criteria, criteria or European criteria of quality and taste, we discover there seems to be a European taste policy inside ourselves. And so we, we want diversity in our program, but the diverse and the other should cooperate with this taste policy. For example, I commissioned in the Ruhr Triennale in my first year um, uh, a work by Burkina Faso and Belgium-based choreographer Serge Mikuli Bali. Um, that was in the first edition. And he and his dramaturg, his dramaturg was Felvin Saar, created a sort of dance essay about the mythologies of the pre-colonial time and their influence into present West African societies. When I went to the rehearsals, I had a problem with the aesthetic and some dramaturgical pro problems, because some things were too outspoken in my regard. Um, I could discuss about the uh, uh, dramaturgical problems, but about the aesthetic, there was no discussion possible, and they told me uh, that is your white European taste. And so I felt uh, they are partly right. Uh, so that brought me to the question, what can, we sh what can we present, what can we produce in which context? Because I felt that this work, and that, that was also the history of that work, that um, resonated much more to African audiences than to European audiences. So I asked myself, how ready are we <clears throat> to really go into other contexts, uh, achieve more knowledge about them, more background knowledge that we, and how ready are we to really accept other aesthetics? And I guess that is something which is also in the music field um, a question. Yeah. Uh, I'm, <coughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I would like to sort of like take yeah. that up and also like uh, throw it out to uh, the rest of our panel. Um, uh, I mean, one, uh, yeah, you bring up many, many things, the, the quality and equality uh, issue, also the question of taboos. We've already heard the, this morning that we should stop fetishizing world premieres. Probably there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of other things we should stop fetishizing as well. Uh, and now we're in the question of how things resonate uh, in, in one place or, or another. I wonder if uh, uh, Duyun, Sharif or Art Yom, if you want to jump in on any of those issues. Um, I think that um, uh, in some uh, in some practices, music is absolutely very political. Can be very political, uh, especially if you uh, know uh, who gets to practice what, who gets to sing what, uh, why there are uh, a, a, a girls who are not taught. Uh, a certain type of songs, a certain type of dances, uh, that knowledge are not uh, being passed on. If a girl, if a woman uh, uh, use that language in, in itself, it's already a political act. So those are the nuances, and and of and for instance, uh, a certain uh, practice a use of their voices, uh, a, a, a female. Uh, 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 quality singers will never sing as that of the, the male singer. So if you were to combine that gender form as well, um, so that in itself, and they would actually be shunned by. Uh, 
So if a person to say that I wanted to experiment with that in the solve, it is a political act. So I think I'm trying to get here is that um, it does need a, another layer of, of um, uh, telling or communicating that nuances in itself is um, is political, if I'm making sense. So sometimes it's not just words, right? Sometimes it's just understanding of of that what the practice is getting getting uh, what are the practices who can do that practices and and um, in your Europe or in Anglo in US or you know in most countries um, that we because knowledge is all everyone can do that so 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 it's less of the problem here I'm very interested and now we're uh, talking about the specificities particularly since you, since you brought up language and that was already uh, in the air the, uh, this morning. Um, we're talking about the specificities of the uh, precision and the precision of working with very particular uh, uh, practices and how how to kind of work between those or work with them. Uh, I was very interested, Sharif, that you uh, at the beginning said also uh, that you felt strongly that uh, within an improvisational praxis, um, uh, uh, music is universal. This is one of the kind of uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, expressions that we've become used to, to sort of trying to give up to give up talking about, of course, uh, Western European classical music uh, as being uh, universal. But um, but can we can we get back to talking about uh, the, the way that music works? Uh, that we can work with music across different specific. Uh, practices could still have a universality in there, or is there, is, is there a conflict there? Uh, no, no, no conflict, no conflict at all. On the contrary, uh, 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 in my, in my uh, opinion, music is universal by, in its essence, uh, and it's also uh, political in its essence. It's, uh, um, uh, in a way, it's a language uh, stripped of its um, of a clear narrative, but it's still a language. So, uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, extremely political. Uh, you, you don't you don't even need to to give an uh, um, example where 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 the, the political nar narrative is obvious, like in the examples that uh, Duyun was giving, in cases where indeed you can get uh, you can do a political act by like, let's say having a, a women uh, here in Lebanon playing a, a man's instrument or what is recognized as a man's instrument so this is a clear political action but uh, uh, even uh, at, at, at sub levels uh, it's extremely political uh, because it is language and all language is political there's a, a book by um, a British musician, uh, Eddie Prevost, which is titled uh, No Sound is Innocent. So I think uh, uh, I uh, fully uh, abide by this, this, uh, this title and its meaning. And the book is really interesting to read. Thank you. Yes, yes, go. I have a question to you. Um, do you think, you would not think that um, in the area of music, um, um, is, is very much dominated by a Western taste. So that... To me, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. There is a, a huge uh, Western... Uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's the power, power, power is in the West. Uh, not only taste, I mean, money is in the West. Uh, um, uh, the, the West controls the narrative. Uh, around music, that's very clear. And uh, to change this, I think we are. I think part of this seminar is on how to change this. If I understand it correctly, how to change the fact that the West controls the narrative? How can curators create their own narratives who are not, uh, um, who are, are innovative, who are new, who reach new grounds? 
so yeah, it's a start. I mean, this has started, of course, it's not starting now with this seminar, but, uh, but, uh, but we have a long way. We have a very long way. I mean, these are teams I like to talk about, but maybe we don't have enough time uh, to go into uh, at least um, how uh, we see this in the Arab world currently. Uh, of course, the Arab world is entirely uh, over-politicized uh, for understandable reasons. Uh, so maybe we suffer from this uh, also in the musical uh, realm as well. And uh, of course, it's been years since I started doing music that I'm confronted with uh, how uh, the West is, is trying to impose a specific narrative on me as an Arab musician and how to resist this narrative, which is, it's an ongoing process. I'm telling young musicians now who complain about this, uh, uh, don't complain too much just prepare yourself this will never go away it will never go away it will follow you all your life just stay calm and uh, and uh, learn how to protect yourself to to defend yourself deny like for instance deny that you are uh, uh, expressing uh, let's say something uh, very cliche but uh, i'm not expressing the war in my music I'm not, you know, and I keep saying it. I don't express the war in my music. My war, my music doesn't express the war. And I keep getting asked again and again and again, how does you, why we heard the war in your music. You, surely the, the war must have had an impact on your music and you just have to keep saying no, 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 no. Forever, it, it, it doesn't stop. I mean, I hope it will stop. The day it stops, maybe we can say that uh, the West is no longer controlling the narrative, maybe. Yeah, okay, is it, is it euphemistic that we are even, I mean, if, even if we can agree that we live in political times and, and the, when, when we work in the arts, it's political, whether we like it or not, um, uh, is it even a euphemism to be talking about power and politics? We should just be talking about money uh, and redistribution of, uh, of uh, you know, that kind of decolonization, which is uh, material. Um, uh, is, 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 it a, is it just a euphemism that we're, that we're talking about all these kinds of other terms and concepts and so on? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, actually, I would uh, already now begin to pick up some of the questions that have uh, that have been coming in from the chat and from YouTube. Um, and I would, uh, it, it's a free for all between the four of you, which one takes it up. Um, uh, I have the first one here uh, from uh, uh, Sigali had one. Uh, do such civilized and organized uh, discussions as we're having now still com contain the possibility for change? Would the best form of solidarity with Sharif Senawi in Lebanon not be to stand with political struggles against climate change and systematic forms of ge ge geopolitical oppression? <laughs> um, uh, uh, maybe in the in the spirit of saying uh, we 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 should like talk about bigger issues than uh, than power within create uh, within curating yeah, okay. and so on. Mm -hmm. Should we be talking about the climate systematic uh, geopolitical shifts uh, and impression, uh, a point which we've just arriving at now in the in the dialogue? How can we move that forward? We can always talk yeah, about. I, I, feel, yeah. I feel there are many questions within this question. I don't know if someone else, uh, everybody agrees. Maybe Artyom, you have uh, something to say also about this idea. You have the idea of like secondariness uh, of uh, of art following uh, geopolitical issues, and that maybe we can turn that around and make it primary that art is uh, is driving those issues. Uh, maybe you have something to say about this. Yes. Um... Uh, somehow, uh, it, it is uh, something connected to what Stephanie um, was saying about the process of uh, getting more and more multicultural and uh, the process of globalization and the processes of um, 
exchanging cultures and exchanging the concepts and exchanging with with the, the ideas coming from the west uh, i think this process of uh, getting more and more um, intercultural the more and more diverse in the sense of components of the culture is not the goal by itself it's not the aim it's something which goes by itself we cannot say we work for for this it, it goes by itself the question is either we are secondary either, either our, our activities are secondary going because of this process or our artistic ideas are giving the overall direction the overall mission to this and um, the, such global mission should be there because in other um, case uh, we still are um, dealing with the endless variety of individual artistic views it was actual it was great uh think uh in 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 the middle and in the end of 20th century but my personal maybe not uh, so popular but still my personal point of view uh that today um uh, instead of uh the endless variety of individual points of view we have to move toward to the creating uh somehow the phenomenon of um, I ideas of collectively generated because in my personal uh point of view is that the task the the goal of our artistic activity today is to reach the deeper or the wider level of consciousness the wider level of understanding the the very basics of our life the very basics of our creative abilities the our the the, the very basic of what what is the purpose of human beings on on the planet i i know it sounds strange and and <laughs> utopic and etc but yes it is how it is the process of, of globalization is there any way let's think what we where we where, where call it. what yes where it call us exactly absolutely, absolutely. Yes. because otherwise we just stuck in this terms and t t you know words exactly. and then we lose our each other in the process i feel you know i think that we lose each other in the and then we we're too um holding our pigeonhole or oh, this is what we have done we should fix it and then we're we're, we're forgetting why we are doing the music in the first exactly. place exactly yes yes and because why we, how come, yeah uh if before we would i mean in the end of uh 20th century we in music we would say uh there is a let's say group or or a camp of new complexity people and minimal music and let's say um, electronic music and here where we can uh, uh, say there is a uh, there is music ca coming from the from europe music coming from middle east music coming from asia we still are dealing with this endless variety it's it's not new it's just new components within the the old-fashioned logic and within the old-fashioned structure of how it works and it it will be like that by itself uh, yeah. Yeah, as just to add one point is just um i was saying earlier in, in my presentation was about that is is sometimes i think that um like so you know i think people like us we get a bit tired of the idea of uh, representation the 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 exhausted of you know we always have to talk about the ownership of the uh, representation and not um and then i i wanted to you know invite all of us to to really look at in 
our eyes and then saying that, you know, this is the people who are you interested in. It's the people, it's the individuals um, you're interested in. And don't let the other, sometimes don't let the ideas to really fear and saying they come do that, you come do this. And, and to celebrate the people um, and then by actually inviting them to talk and they don't have to subscribe everything that you say, right? But that's what, why we are doing the diversity. I would just like to uh, uh, ask if there's any questions uh, also from from the people here in Berlin. Uh, and meanwhile, while you're thinking about that, uh, you're welcome to move to the microphone if, uh, if so. We take another question um, uh, from online uh, following up. Um, it might even be one for, for Stephanie as we're here in Berlin. It concerns the fact that we, are, we have the uh, Fridays for Future uh, demo going on outside. And the question is, uh, are they more effective than us? Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a straight up one. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a huge performance, of course, they are yeah. doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's they are um, today, of course, in the in the moment, they are for sure more more effective and uh, they have uh, possibly real, real consequences. And I think in the arts we have um, that is not uh, that is a, these are long term term effects i want to bring one example from from theater um i wrote once in in an essay that theater in post colonial parts of the world is a colonial construction um, be because it's it's brought to african countries south american countries also by colonial languages and a long time you could see that these ways how theater was produced and played and performed followed along those lines what these French and English institutions um, had brought there. Since 20 years, I think there is a process the other way around. There are very political subject matters and very subjective um, 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 uh, way of performances created in the Arabian countries, in African countries, in South American countries, and artists, theater artists here uh, start to imitate that. So I think that the, our, the effects of art are, 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 are go in processes and uh, go by communication, with, in communications, and of course art, the big difference to a demonstration uh, or manifestation is that I th that is for me still one condition of art that it has to bring us to a territory where we have not been yet it has to bring us to a complexity which we don't uh, um, have in a in the thoughts of a discussion it has to bring us somewhere else uh, and I don't mean it as escapismus I mean it as a to another territory of our minds and I think that is something we can all agree with, whether we do theater or music or, or literature or whatever. Um, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> um, uh, so the, f the following up uh, from, from uh, follow up question from, uh, coming through now is that uh, are we just diverse in our trip to climate and political apocalypse? Uh, do the arts not have a role uh, to play in trying to stop this? has a exper experimental music lost its cultural uh, legitimacy and it's very interesting what you just said stephanie about uh, yeah the 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 provocative uh, way of seeing that maybe yeah theater as such is a a, a western construct which uh, doesn't necessarily um uh, uh, makes sense to uh, unproblematic. We, we can't unproblematically unpro talk about theatre elsewhere uh, until we start to understand the these uh, processes flowing both ways. Um, yeah. Um, does anybody want to uh, to to jump in on this about the legitimacy of uh, experimental music and contemporary music? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I can jump in. Yes. Uh, I don't understand why the, the question is uh, uh, um, uh, pointing out experimental music or contemporary music. This is uh, basically relevant to all arts, if I'm not mistaken. This question is relevant. Before, 
to all arts. You mentioned b before I uh, sort of flew, flew Culture, past the statement, exactly. sorry, that um, experimental music doesn't exist. Um, uh, do you want to ex explain that for us a bit more? I, I meant uh, it's not a kind of music, you know, it's not a genre. It's, uh, uh, it's a generic word we use to, 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 to put together um, many different things, basically. So it's a, it's a strategy, it's a path, it's a way, it's not a, a genre, yeah. Yeah, it's not a genre, like you, you can't say, uh, I, I play rock uh, or I play uh, classical or I play experimental. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a style, like it's not, it's not a, uh, yeah, I think pretty clearly it's not, but correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, the, the way I usually explain it here uh, in Lebanon, because I'm trying to, I, if I go on, on TV or something and I have to explain to people who have absolutely no clue uh, what I'm talking about, I will usually, usually say that experimental music is not a genre. It's an approach that can be applied to any kind of other music, basically. Um, so that's the way I define it, but uh, I'm not sure it's accurate, but it kind of gets my point across. Absolutely, thank you very much. Okay, we have a question from here in Berlin. Hi. Hello, um, thank you for sharing your thoughts on curating like the productional side of preparing a festivals program or an ongoing program in a house. But um, what I kind of missing here is the question on, are you creating like also an audience? Um, are you curating um, how an audience is built up um, and put together in, in a more diverse way? If we look at the, well, German or Western European audience in classical or contemporary music, it's basically uh, elder, well, white, um, not very diverse audience. So, how, how do you work with the, that side, not the, not the production side, but the audience side? Is it to me? Or I'm well, expecting four very different answers here. Yeah, so maybe I, I everyone wants to chip it's in. It's too with... long the question for <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. these few minutes we have here. But okay, but diversity in audiences, uh, maybe we have like four, four versions of answers answer to that, sort of very context dependent. Uh, ready, steady, go. <laughs> Um, shall I? Yes. Great. Um, yeah. It's uh, again the, the very much parallel in in the reality of uh, Sharif's uh, musical life, because uh, when we perform experimental avant-garde contemporary music in Tashkent in Uzbekistan, we always have somehow to find a clue, a key uh, to the audience. What is this? Why? Why they have? Why they come to listen to this? And uh, just naturally, without putting a special concept behind it, just very naturally, we understood that again, it's very basic thing. We simply have to talk with people instead of presenting a uh, pre-existed idea. We have to. We, we understood that, that we have to involve our audience into the collective process of understanding, into create, creating the sense of what's going on right here, right in this moment, in between us. So in this sense, we are creating our audience during and because of our performances. And uh, later on, we understood that it is actually not only about contemporary music particularly, it's about any kind of music. Because if you go to a concert of classical music, it's again sometimes very much about uh, cliches, like they are playing music on the stage where we're, we're sitting in our place and then we, we just put, uh, put a cross in our list of cultural capital, let's say. Our cu cultural capital is now richer because we went 
to a concert of uh, Berlin Philharmonic. Yeah, and the, the, I think that the future and actually the, the, the reality now is that we have to reconsider this also, to reconsider the role of our audience, why we are playing music to these people. And my personal answer, because we want to talk to this people, to these people in very personal way. And here it doesn't matter, are these people professionals, uh, experts in music, or they're amateurs, or they're just uh, pedestrians on the street. It's all the same. We have to find a way of real talk with people, not only exchange on informational level, but also exchange on emotional and spiritual level. That, that's my answer. Thank you very much, Art Yom. Um, unfortunately, we're uh, at the end of the panel here. Already in the first keynote, we had uh, about 200 issues on the table very, in very fast succession, and now a lot, of, a lot more have come up, uh, which, um, uh, which we can't manage, unfortunately, to, uh, to take one by one. Uh, so um, I just would like to thank all the panel members for, um, for putting out uh, your different positions on uh, all these very many different issues. Um, uh, which uh, which uh, sort of swarm around the idea of curation and of diversity, but so much else as well. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank everyone who's who's been listening to, to this panel, um, and uh, it, yeah, just conclude by uh, saying that we're really looking forward to what come uh, what comes next and uh, obviously uh, being in contact having uh, having a debate like we're having today uh, is just a part of it and um, uh, yeah feeding into these local uh, practices and audiences uh, is the other half which we can't represent today so thank you very much everyone <laughs>